What's up guys, Dark Maritech here, and I'm sorry that I've been gone for around a month. School's been taking up all my time, but anyways, I'm back now, and I plan to try and upload more often. School does take priority, but I would like to still make time to work on the channel. With that being said, let's move on and get into today's video, which is a budget gaming PC for $650. Now, I realized that my last video was impractical, and this time, I wanted to do something more practical and rather affordable. Also, gaming season is right around the corner, at least for me, with a bunch of new releases. It was either now or never to make this. Anyways, to start things off, I'm going to jump into the motherboard, which is the Gigabyte GA-H110M-A Micro ATX LGA1151 motherboard. This motherboard comes in at a price range from about $50 to $60 depending on where you look, but this motherboard has all the essentials you need to get started with your gaming PC. It comes with USB 3.0 ports, 4 SAT 3 ports, a decent BIOS, and 2 slots for running memory at DDR4 2133 MHz. The only caveat that really irritates me is that it only has one fan header, so a fan cable splitter may come in handy, and these are very cheap on sites such as Amazon. Nevertheless, this is still a good motherboard that doesn't break the bank, which is essential in a budget build. Up next is the CPU, which is the Intel Core i5-6400. I originally wanted to use the i5-6500, but the price difference between the two, while small, will be put towards somewhere else in the build. Also, the difference in performance will be very minimal. The 6400 comes in at around $180, but can depend on the seller. It is a Skylake chip, which is one of Intel's most recent consumer set of processors. It has 4 cores, 4 threads, a clock speed of 2.7 GHz, and a turbo clock speed of 3.3 GHz. Quad-core processors are still the norm for PC gaming and benchmarks tell the rest. This processor can handle some light to medium video editing and professional use as long as you don't overdo it. Don't let the lower clock speed fool you though, as this processor is still no joke and has some serious power when paired with the right graphics card. Speaking of which, the graphics card in this build is the new NVIDIA GTX 1060 3GB edition. This card is a beast at around $200 and is the current competitor to AMD's RX 480 and these cards trade blows. The RX 480 typically beats the GTX 1060 in DirectX 12 titles, while it is the opposite where GTX 1060 beats the RX 480 in DirectX 11 titles. In ports, the 1060 consists of one DVI Dual Link, three DisplayPort 1.4, and one HDMI 2.0. 1080p is the sweet spot of this card, although some 1440p games can be handled. But overall, you should be very pleased with the performance, and in this case you'll be hitting high FPS in a lot of titles. For the RAM, I went with a set of two 4GB sticks from Crucial. 8GB of RAM is still a standard for most games, although some are starting to recommend 16, but it is still enough to run pretty much any game. It runs at a speed of 2133 MHz, and is honestly nothing too special, which is okay in this case. All we need is for a cheap set of RAM that will work and won't cause any problems. This kit doesn't have a heat spreader design and it comes in around $35, although right now it is about $37 on Newegg. Bottom line, this kit run gets the job done, which is exactly what we need it to do. For storage, I decided to fit in a Western Digital 1TB 7200 RPM hard drive for mass storage and an ADATA 240GB SSD for Windows and some games. Nothing much needs to be said about the Western Digital hard drive as it is a reliable brand and the 1TB will make up the storage space for larger files or for the mass majority of files. But for the 24GB SSD, it makes quite a difference not just from loading windows, but in games, especially large ones. With an SSD, loading times are cut easily in half, but without it you could be waiting upwards of 3 minutes in very large games. But anyways, the combination of SSD and hard drive will work out pretty well here, and they somehow fit into the budget which I wasn't quite expecting. The hard drive comes in at about $50, and the SSD is around $63 at the moment. Next for the power supply, we're going to go with the Seasonic S112 II 430W 80 Plus Bronze Certified ATX Power Supply. At first, I was a little skeptical about the power supply, not because of the brand, but of the capacity of 430 watts. However, after I calculated the estimated wattage under load, I felt better as the system will use a little less than 350 watts. That is probably thanks to the low power consumption of the GTX 1060. I will link to the site I used to calculate, but in the event I'm wrong, there are two EVGA 500 watt models that can be used to substitute it. But in regards to the power supply, 
Seasonic is a very reputable brand, it has good reviews on multiple sites, and is non-modular but comes with a good variety of cables, and it's fairly quiet as well. For about $40, this power supply is a great addition to this budget build. And lastly for the case, we will use a DIY PC DIY-F2. It is priced at $35 on Newegg and comes in three different colors of black and purple, black and orange, and white and black. So besides the fact that this is a case from a band you may or may not have ever heard of, what makes it so special? Well, a couple things. To start, it is a micro ATX case, meaning that it is smaller than a typical full-size ATX case. But this case only has compatibility for micro ATX motherboards. It comes with two 120mm LED fans with the color of them depending on the color of the case chosen. A low water cooling support for room up to 240mm cooler. It is made from steel so it should have sturdy build quality. And the last, which are my favorite, are the camera measure room in the back and the side panel window. I say these two things as while there are other and cheaper cases out there, sometimes they lack camera measurement opportunities, making them difficult to work in sometimes. For a side panel window, it's just for aesthetics and to show off the internals of your build. For $35 though, this is a pretty good value for money. So that is it, I hope you guys like it and leave some feedback to help me improve. There will be a PC part picker link in the description alongside the power supply calculator that I use for the build. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I'll try my best to answer them. Before I take my leave, like the video if you liked it, dislike if you disliked, and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching and have a great day and night.